Hello, I'm Matt, welcome to Badger Workshops. I'm a big fan of these Stanley cases, and I've got quite a lot of them. Now, I want to make some storage for them. I'm going to make it out of sheet goods, so good opportunity to use my bench. What I have is some 18mm MDF. So I've got no plans and I'm not going to use much maths, I'm just going to work around the parameters I have. I want this to have three stacks of these cases so I can just lay them out to work how long it needs to be. And I also don't want it to be any higher than my workbench. I'm going to use my new Bosch 18 volt track saw to get this cut out. So I get a nice big 8 amp hour battery put in, hooked up to the cordless rack and then I can start getting the bits cut. I'm cutting two pieces the same size, which would be the top and the bottom, and then four smaller pieces, which would be the ends and the internal dividers. Now to join this carcass together, I'm going to use this jig kindly sent to me by Peter from 10 Minute Workshop. Now I've had this for a while and I've been waiting for a project to use it on. Now the other thing I've been waiting for a project to use is this router by Trend. I know, I'm a very lucky boy. Now Peter's kit comes with a guide bushing and the Trend router comes with this centering cone so I can get this guide bush centered in the router. The kit comes with a 5mm cutter so I can get that locked into place and then get the depth set using the jig. I'm going to start by doing the tight mortises in the end panels and the dividers. So I'm going to get clamped up in the vise and then I'm going to use the jig with its reference pins to reference off each end Then I can plunge down and get it cut. With the first mortise cut, I just flip it around to the other side, push down the other pin, clamp it up and get it done. And then I just keep repeating this on all the end and dividing pieces. Now with those done, it's time to get the mortises cut in the top and the bottom and I'm going to use a different part of the jig to do a looser mortise and that will help with alignment later. So I just swap the pins around, get it clamped up and then just repeat the process. Now for mortises that are not on the edge of the sheet it's slightly more complicated I mark out the center of where I want the dividers to go and then I get a couple of dominoes put into one of the dividers. I can get that board put on and then the jig hooks over the domino and I get it lined up on the center line that I've drawn. Now to lock it in place there I can put a screw in which will never be seen because the divider is going to go over it. Then I can plunge down and get the mortise cut and I just keep repeating this until they're all done. So all the mortises are cut, but before I put it together, I'm gonna to put some shelf pins in. Now Peter's jig actually has the facility to cut shelf pins, but I've got this one from Trend, so I'm gonna use that. Now you can adjust how far you want them in from the edge. I'm gonna go for 30 mil, get it clamped down. Then I need to swap out the guide bush in the router and start cutting them. There's not much to this process really, you just move the router to the hole and plunge down. Then when you get to the end, you can move the jig along and put one of these plastic pins in to change the position. So I'll put a link down below to this jig, Peter's jig and the router I've used.
all the holes are drilled so now I can get it put together. So I can get some glue applied and the dominoes put in and then just start sliding everything together. This should be pretty simple. And it was simple. I got the dominoes into the tight mortises first and then they can go into the looser ones and that gives you that forward and backward slop so you can get it perfectly aligned with the front of the cabinet. It really went together very quickly and when I had everything installed I could then get it laid down and get clamps on to pull everything tight. Unfortunately the one thing I hadn't thought through was how many long clamps I would need and I didn't have really enough but it seemed to all work out in the end. So that's my first time using dominoes. And I have to say, of all the cabinets I've ever made, that went together the easiest. Uh, much easier than dowels, easier than screws, it really went out together in no time. So I'm just going to leave this to dry now. Right, glue's dried, now I need to get a back put on it. So I've got some 9mm MDF. I'm just going to get this measured, marked out, and then cut down with the track saw. Oh. To attach the back, I'm going to run a bead of glue round pre-drill some holes and drive some screws in. When this thing is filled up, it's going to be pretty heavy, so I'm going to add some extra strips to the bottom for support. I'm also going to be adding casters, so they're going to give me something thicker to attach it to. So I'm going to put casters on this, and I'm actually going to put six on because it's going to be so heavy. Now these casters are quite big holes, so I'm going to use some bolts, and I'm going to use threaded inserts so I can get those drilled, inserts put in with a bit of CA glue, and then these bolted on. That's it put together, but now it needs some shelves. So I'm going for my third different size of MDF and that's some 12 mil, which I'm gonna get cut down for the shelves. So this is just a workshop project, but I painted my workbench and I've got some stain left over. So I'm gonna use the same stuff to do this. So the paint's all dry, now I need to get the shelf pins put in, all the shelves in, and all the storage boxes. So that's it all done. Now I've got plenty of storage, and I can easily access everything. I really like this shelf pin system, first time I've ever used that. But it means if I ever change the setup, I can just move the shelves around and I've got plenty of room to expand in the future. So, thanks for watching. Thanks to my patrons and please subscribe for more videos.